Video games, eh? We like to play them, buy them and collect them. Everyone has their favorite franchise that could have spawned several titles. Some, like Resident Evil, have so many spin-offs and games that you could fill an entire house with them. Such is the nature of games. If they sell, we'll probably see a sequel. But what about when a sequel to a very famous franchise isn't localized? Almost every long-running franchise has something that just didn't come to the West. It might be a Game Boy Advance novel such as the Silent Hill one, or just one game that for some reason didn't seem like worth releasing outside of the land of the rising Sun. And sometimes there are consoles that were supported in a country but didn't sell that well outside. Q Japan and their weird accessories that almost always stayed there during the 80s and 90s. The PC Engine, as it was called in Japan and France, was released in 1987, with a western release a few years later. In some parts of Europe and America, the system was known as the TurboGrafx 16. The console used Hue cards. In later CDs, Neck and Hudson pushed the PC Engine as far as they could in order to increase their sales overseas, but the console never catch on. Now, as you might expect, in Japan the console was a lot more successful. It even fought back to back with the Super Famicom, and it had a successor, the PC FX. A lot of games were released for the system, and actually some of them are pretty good. The CD attachment received an update during the beginning of the 90s. The Super CD-ROM was called, and thus Konami enters the ring. Although I love me some Castlevania, I don't have them on my physical collection. And before you say something about that, I have two copies of Street Fighter Cross Tekken, goddammit. Akumayu Dracula X Chino Rondo, or Castlevania Rondo Blood for everyone else. This is a very interesting game in the sense that I just can't find a good reason not to have this game released earlier. I know about Castlevania Dracula X, but it's just a very underwhelming port. For several years, the game was elusive to the West until a PSP remake in 2007. That game had a few differences, like an English dub. During 2018, the game was part of a compilation, which included the classic round of blood with all the extras and the PSP version of Symphony of the Night. In 1792, 19-year-old Richter Belmont is the main character which would face a reborn Dracula, thanks to the power of the wizard Shaft. Dracula, as always ladies man, kidnapped Richter lover Annette and several other girls, including Maria, which you can play as once you free her. The game is classic retro, why the fuck is this game so hard action? Richter is as stiff as a bookshelf, and not very prepared for a fight to the death with the ultimate vampire. You're gonna see the game over screen very fast here. One interesting additional beta, very disappointing one, are item crashes. Whenever you feel a certain quota of hearts for your soul weapon, you have a big explosion available that covers the entire screen and varies from weapon to weapon. First thing you're gonna notice, outside of the classic sound of the Konami logo, is how seriously this game takes itself. Die Dunkelheit trübte ihre Sinne und das Böse fraß sich tief in ihre Seelen. A German narrator introduces us to a human sacrifice. All very spooky and then the foul screen music. Once you pick your save file, you're good to go to the prologue. This Castlevania feels like a change from the earlier ones in tone, as I said. Death doesn't play around with this and immediately faces Richter in a short battle that serves as a tutorial. After that, you face several levels with very creative monsters that come from different cultures. While the game itself is kinda linear, you have options during some levels that might take you to an entire different route with your own sets of enemies and bosses. The way you have to access these detours are hidden as fuck. And let me tell you, if you want to save everyone here, you are either for a cryptic sequence or seriously platforming skills. Don't get me wrong, the game is painfully broken in some areas. Some weapons are either extremely useful or basically don't work against the gods. There's a lot of trial and error. Richter and Maria's journey will take them to all kinds of places. Waterfalls, a cemetery or a ghost ship. Geographically, levels don't make much sense, but we're talking about a game focused on a teenager fighting evil with a whip, so they can take the liberties they want here. Almost every level ends with a boss, albeit one, which is followed by a battle with four bosses. Talking about Maria, she's pretty much easy mode. She hits more than Richter, but takes more damage. Although it's very hard to get hit because she moves so fast, has a lower hitbox, a dash and a double jump. Thankfully you can play as her very early if you grab the key in the second level. <laughs> Also, her sub weapons are animals, which is kind of cute. As you can see from gameplay, graphics are very good here. Lots of animations in bosses, enemies, and our heroes. 
Rondo Blood has a lot of attention to detail. Sadly, this port is so bare bones, so the best you can do to fill the remaining ratio on your screen is to use a border. This one has a pork on the left, which I thought it was funny. Richter is your typical shonen anime protagonist, and the same can be said for the ladies you rescue. Very classic anime. <laughs> Maria's the comic relief I didn't know I wanted. Hey, what's up with Dracula? He looks choy as fuck. Sadly, the subtitles don't always match the tempo of what's being said in Japanese. And they're typos. <laughs> I could have played the game in English, but what kind of player do you think I am? Subs always. You know in Lost in Translation when they say Japan is like another character? The same can be said for the music here. What? Yeah, I saw Lost in Translation recently and my corazón is hurt. Anyways, music! Bring that shit to 11. Classic tracks are remastered here and there are new ones that are equally awesome. Akira Soji, Keiso Nakamura, Tomoko Sano and Mikio Saito were the composers for this game. They took a very 90s approach with the soundtrack and I frankly love it duro. Opus 13 is gonna be my jam when this quarantine is over, bitches. Once you arrive at Dracula, you'll get the classic intro from Symphony of the Night. This is the last battle, so our heroes are ready. After a few whips to the head and some bitching moves, Dracula transforms him to something very ugly. Whip that dude in the head a few times and he's done. If you rescued all the girls, you get a slightly different ending. And thus, this save ends. But Dracula promised he'll be back. He always is. So we'll see this dude in the future. Rondo Blood is a very difficult game. It has all the qualities and problems for early Castlevanias. I managed to enjoy my time with it, but it is far from the best of the series. A lot of people were hyped when this game was released here, but I just can't feel like I love it. I'm happy it's here, but it's a relic of its time, even when it was released. Still, this one is very important because this sequel transformed the saga forever. So the contrast between the two, from art to gameplay, is worth experiencing. So join me later when we face Dracula again. This time, as his son.